access granted. If you wanted to cook the perfect omelet, you'd use the best ingredients, the best eggs, milk, cheese, and whatever else you like in an omelet. But what if you're the army, and you want the best bulletproof vest, the best electronics, the best vehicle armor, or the best munitions? Well, the usual approach is the same as in cooking. You go out and you find the best raw materials. But there's a group of scientists and engineers at the Army Research Lab who are flipping this thinking on its head. Instead of just scavenging raw materials from the environment, they're designing them, one atom at a time. I do believe that we're going to see great improvements in terms of even when you look at sort of conventional kinds of materials, we're going to see great improvements in their strength, in their weight, how they perform, and how we make choices for what materials to use and design them for that specific application. We really need to develop new combat systems as we uh, don't have the kind of fuel resources on a battlefield that we used to have and, and you want to become more efficient and you're operating in multiple environments, you, you really need to change and modernize and optimize your combat systems across the board from soldier systems to vehicle systems to flight systems to wherever you need to be. The Program Executive Office for Command, Control and Communications Tactical, or PEOC3T, provides soldiers with battlefield radio and computer equipment, which has to function without fail, no matter how unforgiving the environment. For tactical radio systems, you have to be able to uh, operate across the, the entire spectrum of, of the environment. So, for example, in Iraq, you have extremely uh, hot conditions most of the time, a lot of dust and wind. Um, you switch over to Afghanistan, especially in the eastern portion of the country. Uh, you go there, very cold conditions, uh, a lot of snow, you know, very mountainous terrain. So the difficulty with with systems that are going to be deployed with units out in the operational environment is you have to be able to cover almost all spectrums of the environment on the planet. Here at the Army Research Laboratory, scientists and engineers are designing, building, and testing mission-critical gear that can stand up to whatever nature throws at it. Which leads us to the Designing Materials Program, a multidisciplinary approach to creating super materials from the atomic level up. So you get five core elements. I've got to be able to make them, that's processing and synthesis. I've got to be able to describe them, that's characterization. All right. I've got to be able to interrogate them, that's advanced experimental techniques. I've got to be able to model them by bridging all the scales I need to actually get the results I want. Let's break down some of the core strategies. In modeling and simulation, scientists manipulate elements at the atomic level in growth labs like this one. In order for us to keep that edge and to maintain battlefield superiority, we've got to be able to specifically design materials for the soldier. One atom at a time. One atom at a time. And that multi-scale modeling allows us to do just that. Dr. Meredith Reed and her team grow materials one layer at a time. What will this guy be used for in the field, or what could this be used for in the field? Well, after we do the characterization or testing, and we decide that we want to make the device, we can make it into either a laser or an LED, a light emitting diode. Lots of folks have seen, you know, some of those on their keychains. Mm -hmm. And we could use this as the light source for luminescing bio agents in the field. So we could actually use this for bio detection bioweapons that might release harmful particles into the air. This could be something that could be very useful to giving a soldier real-time feedback on the presence of a threat in the, in, the, in the battlefield. During the modeling process, researchers use bridging the scales techniques to figure out how the material's behavior on the atomic scale affects its behavior on the macro scale. We use modeling and simulation to explore materials and try to design them on the computer, see how they're going to perform, see how to tinker with them on the computer to find that optimal material to cause them to uh, be what we want them to be. Dr. Betsy Rice uses supercomputing to study weapon systems at different scales. And so we know that the energetic event occurs at the atomistic scale, but the result is manifested at the observable scale. And so we've got to properly translate the information at this very, very small scale in a way that the models that represent the visual scale 
uh, uh, capture that information and accurately depict it. And so that's what bridging the scales is. It's just simply translating at information at one scale for use in a model at, at a higher scale. What you're doing is designing explosives that go off when we shoot them over there, but do not go off when they get hit over on our side. That is correct. We are trying to design materials that are very, very safe, but effective when we want them to go off. And by understanding, by using modeling and simulation to understand the controlling features of the material, we'll be able to design them for use in a safer, more effective fashion. All without doing it in a laboratory. That is correct. Totally on a computer. Yes. Those desired results are then tested using advanced experimental techniques to study the designer material under extreme pressure. What we're interested in is obviously when we have real armor or we have real explosions or whatever, we're interested in those really high pressures, uh, but we can't do all this advanced experimentation in the middle of something like that. So this gives us a real exposure to a really high pressure that we could see in these other events, but, but in a careful lab environment, we can tell much more of what's happening. And finally, actually making the material that's been designed on the atomic level. After all, the atoms of today could end up as tomorrow's life-saving electronics, munitions, and armor. We will be impacting soldiers' lives in the field, because the materials we're looking at are things they carry with them every day to protect themselves, things they, things they depend upon to come home safe. And we want to make their job easier, make their load lighter, reduce the load they have to carry, make their vehicles safer, to really protect our soldiers and against threats we haven't even thought of yet. Our ability to design something is going to go through the roof and we're going to have a lot of real breakthroughs. Ready for the clockwise view and keep it at Alpha 7. That is so cool.